Hey Saners, welcome to Saints TV. Sorry about doing a late one. Um, it's been a long week, but the teams have been announced. We're playing Melbourne on Sunday at 3.25. Um, let's just go through, I, fi I figured let's just go through the, the changes. We've got an extended bench, which I posted earlier today. So far the changes are, and this is what we've gone with so far. The surprising thing is Blake Akers is out. Um, being managed, so he's kind of like our best, he's been our best mid, our most consistent player, apart from Jake Carlisle this year, and it seems like he's being managed, so I'm very curious to see why Blake Akers is being managed, if it's an injury, if it's not, why the hell isn't he playing, we want to see our best players out there, it's a big game, and suddenly he's a bit injured, so that's going to be a surprising thing to see if it's just for a rest, if he's a bit sore, it's only round seven, so there's there's kind of no excuse for him to him to miss a game. In the ins though, uh, you've got Hunter Clark, David Armitage, which a bit annoying, Josh Battle, Rowan Marshall, and Ben Patton. So Josh Battle and um, and Ben Patton are two players that have really deserved their spots. They've been playing really well at Sandringham, uh, Battle being that mid-sized forward that we've always been looking at. Um, and we've kind of missed, I guess, memory in that sort of form. So it's good to see that the battle can hopefully come in if he can stay in the squad. Again, it's an extended bench, so you, you kind of don't know what they're going to do until until tomorrow when they announce the actual squad for the match. But in the meantime, it's Hunter Clark, David Armitage, Josh Battle, Rowan Marshall, and Ben Patton. The annoying thing about this, and just put my laptop down. The annoying thing about this is we were calling out uh, Jaden and I in our review match after the Hawthorne game. If you hadn't seen that, go check it out. But if you did watch that, you would have seen that in terms of lineups this week, I mentioned, and we, he kind of agreed, that we wanted to make a statement. We wanted to do something a bit different with our lineup. Right now, it's like when, you know, we wanted to make a statement. Everyone's like, well, we made a statement. He dropped, he dropped um, Josh Bruce, and then we find out he's injured. Blake Akers is being managed. He's he's not even omitted. We want players, like we we don't want players, but we we kind of were hoping that a player like Gresham or Billings or Jack Nunes, someone like that, as a statement, would be dropped, um, and he wasn't dropped. So it's the team as is. A lot of the players that are playing played against Hawthorne. They played against North Melbourne. They played against Adelaide. They played against Geelong. They even played against Brisbane when we won, but we were poor. Like that they have to say something. They have to stand up for something on the weekend. And I feel like if they don't do it on Sunday, then Richard has to make drastic changes. And we've said this every single week. We've said this, you know, after the North Melbourne game, we said this after Adelaide, I can go on. We said that he needed to really put the foot down and make those players that have been comfortable accountable for the performances that have been happening. Because right now, they're kind of just picking up their paycheck, they're just getting into each week, another loss, but, you know, whatever, that sort of environment, whereas other teams and other coaches, you know, successful teams and successful coaches have dropped those players, no matter who they are. Ross Lyon, years ago, remember when he dropped Stephen Mill and he dropped, I think he dropped Nick Del Sano in the same week, and we went on to, you know, make a prelim that year, and that was a huge statement because Milne came back and scored four or five, Del Sano had career best stats, you need to make these players feel like they're unsafe unless they put in a performance. Right now, it doesn't matter what performance they put in. It can be shit. It can be even shitter. It could be average. But it doesn't have to be great. And we want them to know that they have to play great to be in this team. But that's not the case. It's surprising, too, because it seems like we've got a lot of good depth uh, at Sandringham. So I don't understand why, you know, if Jack, Jack Nunes isn't playing well, then you don't bring in someone else... Um, like an Ed Phillips, like he's not he's not even getting a look in. Ed Phillips isn't even getting a look in, so it's it's very frustrating um, from my end. I was hoping that this would be the week where we could trial something different. Marshall back could be really great for Hickey. We need someone like that playing Gorn. Um, Gorn is obviously a very very good ruckman, Australian ruckman. Uh, he goes forward, kicks goals. He plays like an extra mid, gets a lot of the ball, marks a lot of the ball, kicks a lot of the ball. He's not just the handball sort of ruckman. Hickey's been in very good form lately, so they're matching up on Gorn at the best possible time for Hickey. Um, we do know that Ben Longer played on Gorn years ago when we beat them, and he was very in instrumental in that. Uh, but we need we need a ruckman that can play around the ground. The fact that Marshall can come in now 
helps us out even more because Marshall's as mobile as Hickey, can go forward, can be a very good market, a very good kick, as we saw in Geelong when he played that first half and he played fantastically until he got his concussion. But it's going to help balance out our lineup. I feel like it's going to be interesting because they've brought in Marshall and Battle. And if you go with that, you've got Marshall, Battle, Hickey, McCartan, Membry. You've got five talls. You've got five players there that can rotate as talls in the forward line. That's as tall as we've ever been, you know, with the likes of Jake Carlisle there and um, Nathan Brown. That's a lot of talls, so I feel like you're either going to get one of Josh Battle or Rowan Marshall. But to be fair, I feel like if we're playing against Gorn, I would rather go with Marshall because at least Marshall can go mid and play Ruck. Battle, I don't know, I haven't seen, but I don't think he can play Ruck. He can just play forward. So at least with Marshall, you get variety and it can chop out Hickey, have a rest in the forward line. Marshall go Ruck. And vice versa, you know, Marshall go into the forward line, Hickey go back in the ruck. So, overall, not too bad in that sense, but I feel like the player out, just Blake Akers. But it's going to change, it's going to change, isn't it? Like, if we're bringing in three or four players, it has to be more than Blake Akers. And maybe that's why Battle's in there, because we're looking at maybe dropping a Billings, dropping a Gresham. It could be a forward, it could even be a member. He hasn't been that great since he's come back, and he still looks a bit injured, so... I mean, I don't know what you guys think in terms of the lineup. You've obviously seen it, um, but I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Nathan has said that Acres must have general soreness club, might have worded it wrong, could have the flu, who knows, go Saints. That's very true. Could have the flu. Could be as simple as that. Um, if that's the case, very disappointing, but it would have been good from the get-go for them to announce the outs, because they haven't announced the outs. And that's the disappointing thing, because it's been so obvious and so glaring to a lot of players, uh, to a lot of the fans, sorry, that um, we've been in very bad form. And it, there's been players like Billings, Gresham, Membry, far out. You can even go as long as Geary, Gilbert, um, and yeah, you, they're not being dropped. So it doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like if this was the week that we made a statement, it was going to be the week, but it wasn't. So... That's how it is. Melbourne, on the other hand, let's talk about the opponent. We're playing Melbourne. They're sitting kind of, I think, just outside the eight. They had, a, annoyingly, a pretty good win against Essendon last week. I, I thought Essendon were going to be more competitive, but they weren't. They never got into the game. Melbourne pretty much bossed it from start to finish, although the margin only got out late. It was kind of close, but you always felt the Melbourne... We're going to take over, and what Melbourne do is they go through the guts and they take the game on. It doesn't always pay off. Sometimes it hurts them on the counter when another team gets the ball in the middle and goes out the other end. That's what we did in the first half against them a couple of years ago, if you remember, in round one. But then the second they cut through our defense, they just scored freely, and that's what they did against Essendon. We have to make sure that we guard the center of the field as tightly as possible, which we have not done against Hawthorne. How many goals did Isaac Smith score from literally walking through the defence? Uh, sorry, walking through the midfield, the centre, where you'd think it'd be more congested than the wider parts of the ground. We need to spread Melbourne. We need to play. It's annoying. We need to play kind of wide, and we've been doing that too much lately, and I've always wanted us to go through the guts. But because Melbourne is so good down the middle, I feel like we need to make sure that that's guarded. And that's going to be very important for players like Seb Ross, David Armitage, if he plays, um, Jack Steven. We need to be very, very careful in that centre position. And in terms of matchups, I don't think Petrarch is playing. We can quickly go through, we might as well go through quickly um, Melbourne's lineup. But they've put Christian Petrarca in. I don't think he's going to be in. I feel like during the week, apparently he just he just came out of his operation on Tuesday or Wednesday, so I, I don't feel like it's likely that Christian Petrarca is going to line up, but I feel like they've put him there just to kind of give the coaches something to think about. They've also got Cameron Pedersen, who's a pretty good forward slash defender. Jeff Garlett, which is annoying because he's pace and we hate playing against small forwards, as we saw against Eddie Betts against Adelaide. Put him into a good form and he scored. Timothy Smith, I don't know him, and Josh Wagner, who's obviously one of those other inside mids that they, they put through the ground. Players to watch out for Melbourne. For you could go through a couple. You've got Max Gorn, obviously the number one player. He's gonna Hickey's got a big job there. Hopefully Marshall comes in and helps balance that out. But Gorn is a very good ruckman. Always gives their midfield first use, so we're gonna have to be careful there. And if he does win the headouts, I, I don't get coaches that don't do this to the team. Start roving him. Just doesn't matter. Hickey shouldn't even go up for the tap. 
Hickey becomes another mid the second the ball hits the ground, and we outnumber him that way. I don't understand why coaches don't teach that. They We're always constantly trying to rove to Hickey, but Hickey's not winning a lot of hitouts lately, and he's definitely going to lose the hitout count, unless he has a huge game, which I'm hoping he does, against Gorn. But it, very unlikely. So the, the thing we have to do is play man-on-man, -man, rove Gorn's tap, and then go from there each time. Another player, obviously, Jesse Hogan. He was in good form last week, kicked a couple of goals. He's always, he's always had bags against us. I don't know why. Probably because we've had a shit defense. But to be fair, Nathan Brown's had a very good season. Nathan Brown's played on the likes of Patton. He's played on Tom Hawkins. He played on Roughhead last week. And he's kept them all very quiet. I think Tom Hawkins maybe kicked one. Patton kicked one. Roughhead maybe kicked one as well. I don't think he's had a bag kicked on him for a while. Um... And he's been in really good form. A lot of people have said, you know, we need to drop the players like Brown, but we need to drop players that aren't actually doing their... They're not playing their role in the team. Nathan Brown is playing his role to a tee. He's not there to rebound. He's not there to kick bags. He's not there to create another option up the ground. He's there to stop his opponent from scoring. The rest is on our other runners, the Robinans, who's unfortunately out for the rest of the season, but we obviously hope... You get better, Robbo. You've been a freaking good player for us and you were in great form before that really scary thing that happened in Geelong. Um, but we obviously wish you and your family the best and I can't wait to see you play again uh, in 2019, which is annoying to say because you're such a bloody good player. Um, their midfield, it's not stacked full of superstars, but they've obviously got Nathan Jones, their captain, who's obviously a very good player. The one there that stands out is Clayton Oliver. He plays inside, he plays out, he goes forward, he kicks goals, he's defensively minded, but he's also great running forward. So it depends on who we put there. I mean, with Clayton Oliver, I think you put a Seb Ross, you put a David Armitage. With a Nathan Jones, you go head-to-head, -head, I reckon. You go Jack Stephen, Nathan Jones, you see what happens there. You don't play too defensive. You need to make them accountable. They're going to be pretty confident coming into this. It's, it's a fact. They're playing a team that's very low on... Confidence, very low on form, and a team that has kicked 5, 5, 7, 5, and 10 goals in the 36 goals in five weeks when teams are kicking. I mean, to be fair, it's a low-scoring season as it is in the AFL, but 36 goals in five weeks. You are never going to win a game. We need to kick over 15 goals just in this game to be competitive, I think, unless our defense has a really good day. But you need to kick. You need to aim for 14 goals minimum to be competitive and to be any sort of a chance um, of winning this game. Other players, they've got Oscar McDonald. They've obviously got Jake Lever. Jake Lever coming in from Adelaide. He's been really good, but a player that I don't think has justified his price tag um, and the pick that they gave up for him, I don't I don't think that's a massive worry for us, but they obviously have players like Jaden Hunt. And this is why I think if we go super tall, it could really backfire. You've got Jaden Hunt, Neville Jetter, and Michael Hibbert. And if you guys have ever watched Melbourne, which I'm hoping you don't because you're Saints fans and you shouldn't be watching Melbourne, uh, but if you've ever watched Melbourne, they love to rebound off halfback with those three blokes. The second the ball hits the ground, and we've got Paddy McCartan, uh, Paddy McCartan, we've got Paddy Membry, uh, Rowan Marshall, Hickey. Um, You've got too many tools there. They're going to expose you on the break, and they're just going to cut you wide open on the counter. So um, if anything, going a bit smaller in the forward line would be good, so that could save the likes of Billings and Gresham and those blokes who have called to to be dropped um, to play another week. But they're going to have to have a big game in terms of tackles inside 50. We had a few of those. I think we actually out-tackled um, Hawthorne last week, and we, we won more contested possessions, but we were just shit on the outside which is typical us. We need to get an A grader. We need to get a couple of them, like a gaff, like a freaking Ollie Wines. We need to get players like that. Um, sorry, I got, got a question. Let me just dump that. Drew said, Mav, start center, kick out to anyone on wing with memory running up to forward. Flank, take the mark, center that to Stevens on a run. It should be a goal. I love, um, just, you know, that's the sentence that's pretty much how to score a goal in an ideal world yeah sure that's how it is mav to start the center kick though that's interesting mav in the center clearance would be good um that does set sort of a precedent on we're here to play he was very quiet last week which is annoying because i kind of talked him up all week about how how good he was um but he was really disappointing in tassie and i flew over there to watch it and he he really didn't play i'm just going to quickly go through a couple of these other ones daryl Howe, Patton on the wing 
who else we've got? Drew Mavisana, we've read that. Nathan, spot on about the ruck, just Rove, Gorn, and Hickey to focus on making contests around the ground. 100%. And I feel like that's that should be the precedent for the most of this game, is that we're not playing a team... We're not playing a team that's freakishly good. They're, they're good. They can be very good on their day. But we're not playing a team that we can't beat. We need to be confident going into this, and that's why I think Hickey needs to be competitive around the ground. He just needs to play off Gorn. He needs to not, like, obviously show him respect, and we need to do that to the whole team and show them respect because they can be very good. But we need to make sure that they respect us, you know, in that, shit, St Kilda switched on today. We need to be on our game to be competitive. We want to see that side of the team. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen a team walk up at halftime and be like, we're fucking dominating. We're doing well. We're in this. We're mentally in the zone. But we have, like... Everyone's, I've read so many articles saying it's not a skills thing, which is surprising because our skills have been poor, but it's a mental thing. And it's, you know, you can't go from having big wins against Richmond and GWS last year and even drawing against them this year and then going to, uh, going to Tassie and performing the way you do. It's all here. They need, to, they need to play a half of football that resembles what they're capable of. They, they did it in patches against GWS, but against Melbourne, it would be even better because we all hate Melbourne. It's been that whole rivalry thing where, you know, who's going to emerge as the top four chance? Is it Melbourne? Is it St Kilda? Who's got the better youngsters? Is it McCartan or Petrarca? You know, there's all this competition about this supposed rivalry. Um, but I want us to put the foot down, and it kind of reminds me of um, early days St Kilda Geelong. Everyone talked up our youth, and no one talked up Geelong. So Mark Bomber Thompson always came out and said, our guys are doing pretty well too. Turns out, his, his guys were pretty good. They won three premierships. We won none. I feel I feel like um, hopefully this is the other way around, where Melbourne are just doing all the, you know, during the season stuff. And when it comes to, you know, winning premierships and winning finals, we're the team that does that. So I'm hoping there's a bit of a reversal there because it did take Geelong longer to get better. We looked good younger, but the more mature we got, the better we, you know, Geelong got. So... Um, I'm hoping it's like that, but it's going to be an interesting game. I'm going to be sitting near the cheer squad, guys, so actually, sorry, I've got another question down there. Let me just... Does Patton debut this week? I would love to see a debutant, but I think we have to drop someone big um, in order to get him in the team. So, you know, Hunter Clark's back in the lineup, so I feel like he's a likely chance, but who do you drop? I mean, who do you drop? It has to be... There's too many good options in the ins that I feel like some of the outs are going to be big, but... For some reason, I don't think Richo's going to go that way. I want him to, but I don't feel like he is. But as I was saying, I'm going to be sitting uh, pretty much in the goal zone area around the cheer squad. So I'm going to get in amongst uh, the fans. Everyone's criticized our cheer squad, but the guys do a really good job there. They work really hard every week. It's the rest of the fans. We all need to get to the game. We all need to create some noise. We're playing freaking Melbourne. It's Eddie Had. It's Sunday at three. No one's doing anything on Sunday at three. We should all be at the ground. I'm going to be there. We need to show the team support. I know it's like, well, why should I fly to Tassie like I did when the team's going to put in a shit performance? Why? I'm actually planning on going to Perth next week for the Fremantle game. That's how crazy I am. Why would I do that? You know, I'm doing it because I want to support the team. So I feel like I want you guys to do that too. I want us to all go to the game optimistic. It's Melbourne. We've we've shown that we can be a good team. I mean, it was six months ago. I can't even remember the, the last time we actually won a quarter, to be honest. But um, we just need to go there and just have a good day. I want the players to show what they can do. And I want... I'm sick of talking about all this negative stuff. Aren't you guys? Like, it's takes all the energy out of me. I, I don't like doing it, but I feel like we'll see tomorrow when the ins are announced um, and then we'll know the full story of what Richo's thinking, but I liked, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but you know, if, if you remember, Richo will send out his members post-game chat and he did that this week, but it was very, very different. If you watch it, he, when he glossed over the positives, he literally said there were no positives this week. Um, it was a bad performance, and he said it was unacceptable. He has never said that. He's always said, oh, it was disappointing. Um, you know, we didn't kick straight, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. Um, but there were some little positives. He always does that after a loss. He did that against GWS, he, uh, the draw. He did that against North. He did that against Adelaide, Geelong. He did it against all those losses. But last week, 
which to be fair, I thought we were good for two out of the four quarters. He actually said, this is unacceptable. We're going to be work, but we're going to work bloody hard during the week to make a change. We need to try something. And he looked like he wasn't desperate, but he looked like he was looking for answers. Finally, the heavens are there. So I'm, f I'm really hoping that he can pull something out of the bag. Um, Carlisle to stay back. <laughs> He's not going forward. Um, Nathan has just said, about time it's positive and pleasing, mate. Go Saints. Thanks, Nathan. That's true. We need to be positive, and I don't want this page to be negative. I want it to be positive. So, I mean, I've got comments from some people, you know, when I post, you know, highlights from last time we played Melbourne, last time we played the team that we're playing this week. People are like, living in the past, you know, this is it. That's not what it's about. It's about, I'm referencing, this is the last time we beat them. Obviously, I'm going to be referencing the past because the last time is always in the past if you know what the past is. So I'm not just trying to live in the past and post highlights of 09 and 10 when we were a good team and Stephen Milne was kicking bags and Hayes was running around tackling blokes for fun. I'm not doing that. It's just, to be fair, when you think about it, what is there to talk about that's that positive this year? It's probably the emergence of um, Hunter Clark and Caulfield and Paddy improving himself and he coming back and looking like he's serious about his ruck work and Blake Akers emerging as a as a potential A grader, Nathan Brown doing a job and Jake Carlisle who's probably leading our best and fairest. So there's maybe six or seven benefits, uh, positives for the year, but there's not many. But I'm hoping on Sunday when I do this uh, video again and it's a review um, at Eddie Had that I'm talking about a win. So uh, fingers crossed, guys. I really want to see us put in a performance. Um, but I'll leave it there. It's it's bloody late. I don't even know what time it is. What is it? It's ten twelve. I'm sorry for keeping you guys up. I'm, I, I, work's been busy and I had to play mix netball tonight and it <laughs> finished late and all that stuff. But I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. And I hope you're enjoying these live streams. I love getting the comments and reading them out. Uh, keep them coming. Um, I'll obviously post this video to my YouTube channel as well, Saints TV. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm also on Instagram, and I'll do some probably Insta stories on Sunday, post-game and pre-game, and maybe between quarters, putting up the scores and what I'm thinking uh, and how we're going. Um, so go to Instagram, it's Saints TV Official, and follow me there. Anyway, guys, I'll let you get some sleep. Uh, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you Sunday. Go Saints.